हेलो एवरीबॉडी वेलकम टू ए टू सेट डेंटिस्ट्री एंड टुडे वी विल बी लर्निंग अबाउट सबमर्ज टीथ आल्सो कॉल्ड एज अनकेलोस टीथ सो बेसिकली दीज आर दोज डेसिडियस टीथ व्हिच हैव अंडरगोन अ वेरिएबल डिग्री ऑफ रूट रिजॉर्प्शन एंड एज अ रिजल्ट दे हैव बिकम डायरेक्टली फ्यूज्ड टू द अंडरलाइंग बोन सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज ड्यू टू सर्टेन इटियोलॉजिकल फैक्टर्स व्हिच विल बी डिस्कसिंग इन फर्दर स्लाइड्स देयर इज सम ट्रॉमा टू द टूथ so as a result uh, the pdl ligament which is supposed to be between the alveolar bone and the root part that is not present in such tooth and they are directly attached to the underlying alveolar bone so now one could imagine that what would happen so basically the first consequence will be such deciduous teeth will never exfoliate because there is no periodontal ligament and as we know that periodontal ligament plays a very vital role as far as exfoliation as well as eruption is concerned in the oral cavity so without the periodontal ligament due to the direct fusion of the root part to the bone there is no exfoliation of such teeth and over a period of time when permanent tooth erupt the alkalous tooth appears to be situated below the level of occlusion and thus it can also result in malocclusion so in this picture as we can make out uh, the first picture is normal wherein we can see periodontal ligament in second picture there is a tear in the periodontal ligament and in the third picture there is no periodontal ligament so this is how alkalous tooth or a submerged tooth looks like so this is how an ankylosed teeth looks like in the oral cavity in the left side we are unable to see any coronal portion of the tooth in the oral cavity whereas on the right side some part of the crown is visible however it lies a way below the occlusal plane moving on to the etiology so the most common etiology is trauma trauma to the developing tooth bud may lead to ankylosed tooth apart from this infection during the developmental stages of the tooth can also result in ankylosed tooth disturbed local metabolism can also contribute apart from it genetics also play an important role uh, as we can see that all these factors are uh, very directly related to the developing tooth bud so basically any of the disturbances related uh, to the tooth during its formative stages can result in such an anomaly moving on this is a picture depicting an alkylosed lateral incisor deciduous lateral incisor so we can see that there is no coronal portion of the tooth visible into the oral cavity however we can just make out a small yellowish calcified mass apart from this we can see that the mandibular lateral incisor appears to be supra erupted when compared to the maxillary lateral incisor so basically as the deciduous lateral incisor was submerged or ankylos there was no eruption of the permanent lateral incisor in this case moving on to the clinical features basically there is no age or sex predilection however um, the mandibular jaw appears to be more commonly affected than the maxillary jaw and in uh, mandibular jaw the second molar is most commonly affected as far as ankylos deciduous teeth are concerned and this condition may involve a single tooth or maybe multiple tooth may be involved now uh, when such a patient comes to us and we encounter more than two or three teeth involved in the same jaw we one can suspect that over a period of time other tooth of the same jaw may also get ankylosed also on intraoral examination we can easily make out such teeth because they appear quite below the level of occlusal plane moreover they are always deciduous teeth now as we know that on percussion a normal tooth imparts a dull or a cushioned sound however an ankylosed teeth imparts a solid sound now this can be understood that normal teeth have an pdl ligament which is between the root and the alveolar bone however ankylosed teeth do not have a periodontal ligament therefore there is direct fusion thus resulting in a solid sound moving on to the radiographic features now this is a opg and mandibular first molar here appears to be ankylosed as clearly it lies a way below the occlusal plane also in such teeth the pdl space is completely absent moving on to the treatment planning so these teeth require surgical removal or excision see because uh, we need to prevent the development of malocclusion in such cases uh now see in this case the mandibular second molar for instance lies way below the occlusal plane so not only it will prevent uh, the 
exfoliation of the deciduous teeth and also but also it will hinder the uh, its successor that is the second premolar eruption will be delayed in such cases and therefore it may directly result into malocclusion of the permanent dentition also local pedontal infection are common in such teeth and it may also lead to development of dental caries therefore it is very crucial to surgically remove such teeth so that was all about alkalos teeth i hope you understood this topic well see you next time bye bye